Mazen Wai Mahare. It's Rowan again, and I'm going to be making waffles using a recipe from the book that came with one of my two vintage waffle irons. Um, this would be the quick plain waffles recipe, and I'm not using the waffle iron that this came with. This is also the same waffle iron that came with the original box when I got it from a Craigslist uh, ad. <laughs> I did not expect it to have the original box, uh, so, and that ends up being, like, the first box that Nigel actually likes. He's a weird cat who does weird things. And for some reason, he was not the biggest fan of boxes until this box, and even now that he'll kind of get into other boxes, he definitely prefers this one, and he'll pout when the, uh, <laughs> when the other cats are in his box. So let me show you which waffle iron I've got. Yes, I know my stovetop is a mess. I know, trust me. So this is a, uh, so this is my waffle iron that I'm going to be using. Okay, I haven't turned it on yet. Now, first let me show this off. Yeah, I know, it's really, really gross. So, the, uh, the, the, uh, it's got two patent dates on it, so something in here was probably updated, and I don't know if you can read this from here, but the later patent date is November 18th, 1924. So, meep! So this was made, uh, 1924, 1925, thereabouts, and I don't think this is the original cord that came with it, but it's one that fits, and it's one that I, it's the one that I got with this. And this is a unique feature on this kind of cord, because the cord, see, it pops on and off. That's why I mentioned the cord being one that fits. So, the fact that it has this little on-off switch, and I'm going to turn it on so that the waffle iron is nice and heated. So, that's, that's a new thing. That was not, like, my, um, let me show you my toaster. So this is my toaster, and yes, I need to blow crumbs out. Don't get on my case. This is also about the same year. Let's, this has a patent date. General Electric. I don't know. I can't find it. I thought I get did. General Electric Co. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Okay, I thought it was a patent date, but uh, the eBay seller that I found this at, uh, he dated it about 1926. So his guess is probably as good as mine. But, uh, but yeah, like, the fact that the cords come undone, so, my, oh, right, that's why I got my waffle, uh, my toaster. So, my toaster, see, that's where the cord goes, and I've got the cord in a drawer. And we see on this side, and on this side, and on this side, there's no on-off switch. So, you plug it and you unplug it. That's how you turn it on and off. So, the fact that this has uh, an on-off clicker, that means that this was probably not the cord that came with it, but... It is, um, it is old enough that it does fit, and it is in perfect working order, and when you have antique appliances, you've got to have surge protectors on all of your stuff, or... <laughs> I learned the hard way, I've blown a couple of fuses, <laughs> and I'm not very proud of myself for that, so I'm just mentioning that as a word of warning, so I've blown a couple of fuses, and the surge protectors help with that, and... Yeah, I think that's about it. So, gonna make waffles now. So, I've turned back around, and I'm going to do this in my typically very organized, none more organized way. Honestly, this waffle iron makes waffles... Ugh. Uh, that's in the area of the size of a 45 RPM single, so about a 7-inch waffle 
maybe six. I don't know. I don't, I could get my tape measure out, but that would involve going back to the front room. And yes, I know it's an efficiency apartment. It's technically all one big room, but I don't care. It, there's enough sense of separation between this area and that area and the bed area that I don't care. The first step they want you to do is to beat eggs, milk, and it says shortening or salad oil, but this book is from 1954, and they called any kind of cooking oil salad oil. Please don't ask me why. I, I just know vintage cookbooks, vi uh, antique furniture, antique appliances, like don't ask me why they always do the things they do. Sometimes I know why, but don't expect me to have an answer for everything. I just work here. Shit, I don't even work here. Nobody pays me shit. Actually, like, a couple people have paid me, um, have given me, like, a couple of five bucks in my various tip jar links. So, and just because I have a whole bunch of download codes lying around for it, I... Have a, I have decided to give them, in exchange for their hard-earned money, a uh, free download code for uh, music for Unshanan de Lu. So, if you want to give me your hard-earned five dollars or more, I will probably send you one of those. One and a quarter cup milk. This goes in the sink, and this goes in the fridge. Now, I could use lard in this instead of shortening, or, uh, what do I have here? I have a big-ass bottle, what was this? Oh, it started out as a gallon of canola oil from Kroger, but when I cleaned out the fridge the other day, um, almost, yeah, about a week ago, I cleaned out the fridge, and I did find my two bricks of lard. I don't know why I have two. Um, there should only be the one, but that's just how life works sometimes. And we want how many tablespoons? Six. And I can still read this. Holy cow. So this is a measuring shot glass for cooking. And uh, it holds up to four ounces and I just find them a lot easier to manage for liquids than the, uh, the measuring spoons. So, I highly recommend getting one if you don't have one. They are kind of a lifesaver. Now this says to um, beat it on medium with an electric mixer, but considering the size of the bowl, I don't necessarily trust myself with an electric mixer this time of night, especially, especially when I really do need to clean up in here, but that's another story for another time, so I'm just going to use my egg beater. This is cast aluminium, uh, instant whip, patent date, April 20th, 1920, so this was made probably later that year, maybe 1921, thereabouts. I'm also going to throw a little bit of some, some, something in here. If all else fails, I'll use the vanilla. I thought I had some... How many vanillas do I have? Maple. I thought I had orange. What did the cats do with my orange extract? Nobody knows yet. I thought I had orange extract, but I do not. So I'm just going to throw in a... Oh, yeah. Throw in a little bit of pure bourbon vanilla extract from Trader Joe's. See, then sift flour, baking powder, and salt together. Add to first mixture. Beat at medium speed, scraping sides and bottom of bowl with rubber scraper until blended about one minute. Is there anything else on the back I need to know? Oh, preheat automatic waffle iron at high. Using 7 8 cup batter, spread evenly over grids, bake 5 to 6 minutes, remove waffle, and close grids while measuring batter for next waffle. Okay, so the rest of that is just 
you know, make sure that the thing is done, and I'm turning it off for right now because, uh-huh, it was maybe a dollar, but it's so beautiful. Look at this. It's pretty. So, the one thing I'm going to do differently for this recipe, and I've done it before, so I know it's not going to screw up, is this wants me to, uh, so let's see, powder, salt, and flour. So this wants me to use one and three quarter cups all-purpose flour, but I've discovered that when you make waffles with cake flour, they turn out so much more light and fluffy and wonderful and magical. And the thing about that, though, is that it recommends when replacing um, cake flour for all-purpose, you want to use... Um, okay, so for each cup of all-purpose flour in a recipe, you may substitute one cup plus two tablespoons of cake flour. So, I did the maths in my head, and this one's one and three quarter cups. So, where's my quarter cup? Right here. I did the maths, and for every tablespoon, that's three teaspoons. So, for three quarter cups, let's see. So, for half a cup, that would be one tablespoon, but three quarters cup would be one and a half tablespoons. But I don't have a half tablespoon. Okay, there's a teaspoon. Nope, there, there's a half teaspoon. I have a tablespoon in here somewhere, but it's probably in the mess that became of my sink. So, first, uh, like I said, one, yes, five, six. So that's the first cup. So for the second cup, or the three quarters cup, we need three for the half cup for one tablespoon. So for the la remaining one quarter tablespoon, that is a three teaspoons to a tablespoon. That would be ew, flour everywhere. Half a tablespoon would be one and a half teaspoons. So there we go. And cake flour goes back in the box. Ah! Three teaspoons baking powder, or one tablespoon baking powder. Baking powder is not the same as baking soda. You do not want to substitute one for the other. If it calls for baking powder, use baking powder. If it calls for baking soda, use baking soda. Don't be a dumbass. And to sift now, I want you to watch really carefully because this is a really deeply involved process. <gasps> yes! Yeah, I know. I probably could pause the camera right now and... But why do that when I can talk about crap and stuff? Da -da -da. Or I could make up a song about you and me and the end of the world. Thanks, Kat. That needed to be on the floor. That is one of my catchphrases around here. If I was living some kind of Truman Show reality, all you people at home would just... You'd hear something and you'd say it before I would. And that's one of those films that I feel was really underappreciated when it happened. You know, when it was first out, people were just like, what the hell do we make of this? Jim Carrey and a drama? What the hell? And he was amazing in it. And that is why I, I let him continue to live. Yeah, I know. Don't. Let me have my delusions of grandeur. Somehow there's coffee grounds in this now. But I don't care. They're my waffles, and I'm going to eat them. There we go. What? Now, yes, this said to do it the other way, but it also said to mix that into a small bowl, and I don't know. All I know is that every time I've done it, I've done it this way, and my waffles turn out amazing. 
My mother knew J.B. Cooper, but that's all she told me, that's all she told me. My mother wants to J.B. Cooper, but that's all that she said. I know it's been over 50 years now, but I don't think that D.B. Cooper's dead. Ah, and you will get that and more on an eventually upcoming album of songs that I write and record, half of them at the bus stop, half of them at, waiting for the crosswalk to change on me, called 30 Second Fuckeries. Because these little nonsense songs that I make up off the top of my head for no goddamn reason other than to entertain myself and make the other bus people stare at me like I've gone crazy. Uh, they're seldom more than 30 seconds long. Some of them aren't even a full 30 seconds long. Please tell me this is still... Ooh, this is definitely still hot. Might want to turn on the thing. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that when uh, making waffles from this recipe, or even the less than quick waffles recipe, because I've got two versions of the recipe, but in my experience, they're both very similar, is like this, like a, uh, oh, I forget how big this is. I think it's about three quarters of a cup, this, um, I think it's just a little under a cup. So this, uh, this is a, uh, soft sides ladle. I don't know. I measured it one time. Somewhere between three quarters and one full cup. That is like almost per wait, no, that's not with this one. Okay, that's, oh, that's right, that's right. Because that's for the other waffle iron, so. Okay, so for a waffle iron about the size that I'm using right now, you want a little over, a little under two of these for that. For one thing that I've noticed about this waffle iron, or any of them, is that the best way I have for taking waffles out of it, which I probably need to do. <laughs> so this one looks a little underdone, but uh -huh -huh. fresh waffles are just so much better than toaster waffles. Um, and especially when you can adjust the, uh, the recipe to your own tastes, like, uh, does this have, this does not seem to have tips for adding fruit to it, but there's this recipe for coconut cake waffles, and I made those one time, and that's why I thought I had orange extract, because that's what the recipe in there calls for. No, the thing that I love about having fresh waffles is that, you know, it does work out to be cheaper when you, you know, buy all the ingredients separately, because, uh, so it does work out to be a little bit cheaper over the long run. Unfortunately, toaster waffles are so much faster and easier, and sometimes you want waffles, but you don't want to go through all the work. On the good side, that has me eating far less waffles, which means I'm eating far less maple syrup, which is probably my favorite sugar intake. That and honey. I just, I don't know. I, I, I like my maple syrup. I like my honey. On the good side, since I am, since I now do, like, my fancy pants gourmet waffles, plus, like, Maya, uh, I do not trust my ancient toaster with uh, with frozen waffles because the sides flop down and that's there's that like this raw coil let me show you so I also like see this is why I don't trust frozen waffles with my toaster because that is that is just like the exposed coil and it's probably not too different from the inside of a pop-up toaster a modern one you know but I figure these have been designed, like, especially a brand new um, pop-up toaster, they've been designed with, you know, frozen things in mind as well as bread. That was not. That was designed with toasting bread in mind. <laughs> I might want to do the large recipe for 
this waffle iron next time. So I could probably make a half a one with what's left. Just try and keep it all on one side. So I'm thinking I could, since I've got the working microwave now, I could just uh, store the leftovers maybe with one of these um, wax wraps from Trader Joe's. That fails. I've got a few of the plastic storage bags. Um, you know, if I can't soften this up enough to trust putting around waffles. I mean, I kind of do. That's eh, halfway there. Um, so yeah, I could try storing some leftover waffles. I think I'll have two full ones tonight. It's Fat Tuesday. And yeah, I know, I haven't been a practicing Catholic since I was maybe 12, 11, something like that. But, uh, because my dad didn't make me go through confirmation, because he was afraid I would make a scene if he forced me to do it, which is nice, which is nice, you know, so, uh, I had to go to Meeting House with my stepmother, because he was being very superstitious and prejudicial about the fact that I was getting interested in pagan stuff, so, but, like I said, I went to Meeting House with my stepmother, she was a Quaker, and... No, that can still have to stand another minute or two. Um, so, but I still do, you know, Fat Tuesday and all of that, just because, just because, as my own pagan practice, I uh, now consider this the uh, the annual pancake feast of Hibernia. Uh, no, not Hibernia, Britannia, because. She is a tutelary goddess of the, uh, um, of Roman Britain, and I have also repurposed, uh, St. Patrick's Day as, what is it, um, the, uh, the Cabbage Feast of Hibernia. Yeah, because she's, a. Uh, the equivalent for Ireland. Though she was a later uh, addition to the Pantheon. Now I've read some stuff that I need to check and see how well it's researched about uh, Britannia. I'm... It's possible that she's not, you know, a quote-unquote Roman invention, uh, but a... Uh, a romanization of a local goddess of the Picts, possibly. I'll look it up. I don't know. At this point, I'm as I said in one of my uh, live streams recently enough. I don't have a problem doing rituals with people who have a more chaos magic um, kind of theology, because as a polytheist, I believe, specifically as a traditional polytheist who was formerly part of the Hellenic Reconstruction Movement, I believe that the gods come from uh, the cosmos, which is the Hesiodic um, opposite force of chaos. And chaos isn't what we currently think of as chaos. Chaos is void. Chaos is without. And the gods come from cosmos, which would be the opposite of void, meaning that with. And so if they come from that which is with, then the gods just are. They just are. Where they originate doesn't matter. What matters is that they are, they exist, and our lives are better off in some service to them. And that's okay. Like, And it's not necessarily that there's any one right way to be in service to the gods, it, just as long as you are. And as long as you are in a way that is most at home with your uh, religion and 
and your religious practices. Now, whether that means you are a part of a more organized group like Hellenion, um, which would be the major Hellenic uh, recon focused kind of group in the United States, or Isse, um, uh, which would be the one in Greece, or whether you are doing your own practices and just like, you know, you read and you research and you look things up and this thing works for you, that this other thing from this other thing works for you, and you kind of just concocted of this mishmash that a lot of people would call eclectic. That's not necessarily a bad thing, the um, eclectic pagan practices. I know a lot of recons, even former recons, like to be a bit derisive of eclectic practices. I am not one of those. As far as I'm concerned, eclectic paganism is another method of practice. And I'm going to take this one. And so eclectic paganism is just another method of practice like, you know, like Reconstructionism is, it's not a religion in and of itself. There is a Reconstruction movement of pagan religions, that is true, but Reconstruction is not a religion, it is a method of practice. So, I've got two big-ass waffles, and... Oh, oh, oh. So since I save money on the waffles themselves, I just... I sprang for the big ass thing of maple syrup. Oh dear, I want to say I got this about four or five months ago. It's like November or December I got this. So you can see how often I have waffles, which is not very lately, but I have waffles and when I and since I'm having waffles that I make with my own two hands with ew, this has been out for a while, but it's okay. It's oh yeah, that's still fine. With homemade butter and good pure maple syrup. So I'm going to butter my waffles, mix the cats their dinner, and then go have mine. So uh, take care of yourselves, and bats and kisses, and I do love you all so much, and slan!